It really means man tried or intended to bring forth some idea about God. But there isn't any God. Man created God. The biblical concept of God is in this way. Man never creates God. God creates man. Or God is the creator of man. God is the maker of man. Man never made God. God rather made man. Those idols made by men are man-made idols or man-made gods. Seriously. They are not the creator. They are not the God we are worshipping. So, skeptics must know the difference between God of the Bible or the biblical concept of God and that of the uh, traditionalists. The gods conceived by man are typically like men. That is it, but the God of the Bible is above and beyond man. For example, probably 500 years before the Israelites were taken out of Egypt, that of out of North, North, North Africa, by the lead of Moses. Asian Babylonians were having their gods they were worshipping. Babylonians already had gods and they were not the supreme deity or the supreme god. And you know what? The Babylonian account of creation is preserved in a book or a document with the name Enuma Elish. Enuma Elish. Enuma Elish, in other words, is when above. When above. That is by translation. In the creation account, the Babylonian gods were co-eternal with matter. When I talk about matter, or when I reference matter, I'm talking about the time and space. So, with the idea about creation, in accordance with the Babylonian idea, or the Babylonian idea, we get to know that the biblical account about creation is something simplistic and also profound. I greet you and I welcome you to Lawson TV. Beloved, uh, it's, a, it's a blessing since we've been able to see another light in this very day. Since you're living right now, it really means God has been so, 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 so grateful. Make sure to go to the subscribe button. Subscribe to this channel. Make sure to share to your loved ones, invite them to this program so they can all enjoy what you are going to enjoy right here. Today, the topic on board is the biblical concept of God. The biblical concept of God. Before then, you probably heard about skeptics. Skeptics. And when I reference skeptic, I am talking about those that doubt the existence of God. Those that doubt or questions the, uh, the supremacy of God. Those that doubt the realness of the Bible, the apostolicity, genuity, authenticity of the Bible. These are those that are referenced as skeptics. They are doubters, they are infidels, and their proper uh, designation is free thinkers. That is how Abraham ben Moshe calls himself. He's a free thinker. And I had a call yesterday from a woman. She also calls herself free thinker. And the question is the deity of God, the realness of the Bible. A clear example of skeptics has to do with the Danish philosopher and theolog theologian Soren Kierkegaard. He maintained that the absolute limit of which our reason repeatedly is drawn but cannot penetrate is the unknown, which he suggested we call God. 1936, chapter 2. In other words, this man was trying to tell the whole world, or his ad address is that, the human mind has reached its limit. Therefore, one must let go of rationality, that is reasonableness or wisdom, in order to make a passionate commitment to God through faith. This is what Kierkegaard said. He is trying to say that for you to believe or to grow faith in God, it really means you are doing away with rationality. You are not being reasonable. You are doing away with reasonableness. It really means he is trying to tell or educate his people that faith rules, rules out knowing and knowing rules out faith. It really means if a person propagates or executes faith, that person is not being rational. That person is being illogical. You see, he is a skeptic. And he doubts everything about God. 
He doubts the perfection and the perfectness of God. He doesn't believe there is God. And you can talk about agnostics, sceptics, and all that. These people claim it is impossible for man to know, indeed, there is a spiritual realm. That is what these people say. And I told you the other time that Aristotle was able to uh, make nonsense of that of a Diocletian statement. Fancy, it is not possible for man to know or something like that. And it really mean, they, they're telling us, for you to execute faith, uh, really mean you need to do away with what? With epistemology. It isn't true at all. The biblical concept of God, that is a biblical idea or teachings of God or about God. Skeptics claim that the God of the Bible is an anthropomorphic God. What word can be used or can, can put in place of anthropomorphic has to do with human-like or, or something that is human-like. It really means they are trying to say that the Bible depiction of God tells us that God is somewhat like human. The reason they say this is that the Bible writers describes God in human terms. Fancy a God that is having features like an eye, a God that is having features like a heart, a God that is having features like a hand. These are stuff that describes human beings. So therefore, they say that God of the Bible is somewhat like human. And for that matter, they cannot believe in this kind of ideology. They abnegate the idea about God and they, make, uh, they mock Christians for believing in such a God. The skeptics claim that throughout ancient times, the idea of God evolved or developed um, in the minds of people. It really means, they are trying to say that God is a mere state of mind. The human mind created God. It really means there isn't any God. But rather, a person tried to find some solution to some natural phenomenon. They do believe, indeed, we need to grow faith in certain things. And for that matter, we need to conclude there is a God and he's going to judge us someday. But there is anything like that. Or what is, there's not anything like that. This is exactly what we've been hearing from Abraham ben Moshe. This is exactly what we heard from Dambaka and all these skeptics. But is this really true at all? It is true that God is described in anthro, uh, anthropomorphic terms in the Bible. But that doesn't mean that the idea of God originated with man. The idea of God didn't orig originate with man. Fancy um, man created God. There wasn't God at the beginning, but rather men, as uh, the evolutionary theory will tell you, men, men came throughout through some natural processes, pure natural processes, but there isn't any supernatural being who is the cause of man or something like that. It really means man tried or intended to bring forth some idea about God, but there isn't any God. Man created God. The biblical concept of God is in this way. Man never creates God. God creates man. Or God is the creator of man. God is the maker of man. Man never made God. God rather made man. Those idols made by men are man-made idols or man-made gods. Seriously. They are not the creator. They are not the God we are worshipping. So, skeptics must know the difference between God of the Bible or the biblical concept of God and that of the uh, traditionalists. The gods conceived by man are typically like man. That is it. But the God of the Bible is above and beyond man. For example, probably 500 years before the Israelites were taken out of Egypt, that of out of North, North, North Africa, by the lead of Moses, Asian Babylonians were having their gods they were worshipping. Babylonians already had gods, and they were not the supreme deity or the supreme God. And you know what? The Babylonian account of creation is preserved in a book or a document with the name Enuma Elish. Enuma Elish. Enuma Elish, in other words, is when above. When above. That is by translation. In the creation account, the Babylonian gods were co-eternal with matter. When I talk about matter, or when I reference matter, I'm talking about the time and space. It really means these gods of the Babylonians were not eternal. They were not, what is it? They were not supreme. They, they, were, they were not the cause of the universe, but rather 
they were coexisting with the universe. That is it. So, with the idea about creation in accordance with the Babylonian idea or the Babylonish idea, we get to know that the biblical account about creation is something simplistic and also profound. Read Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. The Bible says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That is what actually the Bible gives us about creation. And let me give you this Babylonian legend. Let me give you this Babylonian legend. According to the Babylonian legend, a bloody war developed among the gods. If I, when I talk about bloody wars, I'm referencing uh, the exchange of swords, the exchange of machetes. Fancy a war that is breaking out between country and a country. Fancy what is going on currently between, uh, what is this, uh, Russia and Ukraine. You get that? It's a bloody war. They are killing, they are killing several many people. Several many souls are perishing. This is the type of war that went on between the gods of the Babylonians. And they reference certain god with the name Marduk. And Marduk is the wisest of the gods of Babylon, Babylonians. Or Marduk was the wisest of the gods of the ba Babylonians. And again, they had some other goddesses with one with the name Tiamat. And they say that this wisest god with the name Marduk split the, sc the, the skull. What I mean by uh, skull is uh, the bony or cartilage um, case that encloses uh, uh, and protects the brain and chief sense organs and support uh, the jaw. I'm talking about this. This is your skull. I hope you get to with me. What Marduk did was he split the skull of Tiamat. And again, he cut her arteries. Arteries has to do with those, um, th th those tubes that carries blood from the heart to the, the entire body of, the human, uh, of, of, of human beings. How we get to with me? Marduk did this. He split the skull of Tiamat, and again, he cut her entrails. Marduk again caused the north wind to carry her, that is Tiamat's blood, southward to out the way places. And let me tell you something that is very funny over here. According to the Babylonian legend, they continue by saying, when Marduk did this by cutting or sharing the body of uh, Tiamat, he divided the body and created the universe by, uh, by the body of what? Of Tiamat. He divided the body of Tiamat, the goddess, after cutting, cutting her entrails and all that, um, her arteries and all that, and created the universe by these bodies shared or divided by Marduk. This is what the Babylonian legend tells us about the creation account. They were trying to give a definition to what? To such a natural wonder. They were trying to give a definition to this phenomenon because they can see time and space. They can see heaven. They can see the earth and everything within. And they were trying to give some explanation to their adherents or their inmates, they were trying to give explanation to their listeners or addresses. And this is exactly what they were able to tell them. But it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really make, make sense. A world that is being created by the body of what? A goddess. That is exactly what they are trying to tell us. Just consider what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. And compared to this creation account, whether... The, the biblical account makes sense or that of the Babylonians makes sense. That is the exact reason we believe in the what? In the existence and the purity of God of the Bible. That is the exact reason we believe in the genuity, the authentic, authenticity, the accuracy, the apostolicity of the Bible. Because everything about the Creator, who is a supernatural being, does make sense in accordance with the biblical account. That is exactly what we need to be considering whenever we are approaching the Bible with a sinister motive or something like that. Let me also tell you something about what archaeologists did. A few years ago, archaeologists were exploring, what I mean by exploring is they were studying or searching the remains of San San, Peru. San San, Peru. They came upon a small room containing 
rem the remains of adolescent girls at Sanshan, Peru. And when they discovered these bodies, they were not getting, they were not grasping, they were not um, fathoming what actually was about these kind of bodies. But literally they discovered that th those Peruvi Peruvian Indians had appeased, that is, had pleased the uh, concept or thought of, of the gods by human sacrifices. It really means they were, they were pouring out human blood, they were killing people so as to be able to appease their goddesses and their gods. Like, for instance, uh, if it happened to be like it wasn't raining at all, or people were dying, like and they, they were not getting to know the causes of these kind of death or something like that, if there was a disease outbreak or something like that, they were trying to find solutions to all these stuff, and they, were ha they, were, they, they appeased their gods by these human sacrifices so as to be able to get, uh, to, to get uh, those kind of problems solved. That is exactly what they were doing. Their concept about God was human, was human, was anthropomorphic. That is it. Their concept about God was something that can be created by man himself. They were worshipping that which had been made by their own fingertips. But the God we're talking about over here, from a biblical point of view, isn't that one who can be created by man. We are talking about the uncaused cause of all creation, the first existent first cause. The self-existent first cause, the one by, by whom everything came to be, the one by whom all persons came to be, the one by whom everything in this universe came to be, the one who was before the beginning began. We are not talking about God that is co-existent with the universe. No, we are not talking about God that is co-eternal with the universe, fancy the Babylonish gods or something like that. So the biblical concept of God is different from that of the other religions surrounding us. Seriously, we're comparing these stuff and we get to know that the biblical concept of God or thought or idea or teaching about God is more sensible, rational than that of the surrounding religions. The God who reveals himself in the Bible forbids human sacrifice. These were what these Peruvian Indians uh, were doing. That is what they were doing to appease their gods. They were doing this to please their gods so as to be able to be uh, maintained or to be sustainable in their communities. Because they were thinking they had done something wrong to them. And for that matter, it wasn't raining or uh, there had been the disease outbreak or something like that. And for mat that matter, they had to appease them with human sacrifices. People killing their children, people killing their wives, people killing their husbands and all that. That's exactly what was going on over there. But the God of the Bible tells us not to do that. He forbids human sacrifices. You can take your Bible to Leviticus 18, verse number 21. Leviticus 20, verse number 1 through 5. You get to know that God of the Bible never allows people to what? To bring forth human sacrifices to him. God of the Bible never does anything like that. And also, about 500 years ago, there were people who were with their name or with the reference Inca Indians. Inca Indians. These people also sacrificed young boys to the sun god. They had a god they worshipped, and he was with the name sun god. By taking them to the tops of mountains 20,000 feet high, the Inca uh, Indians used to be sacrificing innocent boys. And what they, were, what they used to be doing uh, during the sacrifice was that they had to take them to higher mountains. Mountains of over 20,000 feet high. And what they used to be doing was they stripped them naked. Then uh, they, uh, they, they stripping them of protective clothing and placing them in mountaintop repositories. What I mean by repositories has to do with uh, when they take them to the mountaintops, they need to find some caves, some places that would be able to, re to store out these people. And when they leave them there by leaving them naked, uh, they turned cold, they turned very hot, they turned icy, and they had to die from there. You know what? Their concept about God was what? Human. They created the gods themselves. And they had this idea themselves. But the creator, the supernatural being, God of the Bible, doesn't allow people to, to be doing this. 
God of the Bible doesn't allow human sacrifices or, and, and all that. So comparing the, what the Inca Indians were doing, comparing what the Babylonians were doing to that of the Bible, it really tells us that uh, the biblical account of creation or the biblical concept of God is more suprema than that which uh, is found in various other religions. And again, a graphic portrayal of the difference between the human concept of a deity um, happened in the New Test in the Old Testament. Take a Bible to First Kings chapter eighteen, verse number twenty-one. Downwards, you get to know that uh, something happened between the people of God and the and, and, and those worshippers of Baal. Um, probably you've heard about Jezebel. You've heard about um, her husband Ahab and all that. What they did by killing the prophets of God and all that. So Elijah was a was a prophet who asked, who stood to contend with these uh, Baal worshippers, that is, these idol worshippers. And he challenged them by saying they needed to pray to their gods to help them or to, to, uh, what, to, to, to cause fire to burn their sacrifices on the altar. That's exactly what Elijah did over there. Their concept about God was human. And they had created these kind of idols, and they were serving them fancy. They were supernatural beings. But it wasn't so. But Elijah's concept of God was something that is beyond, or that was beyond what? Man's imagination. They did what they could do. They prayed, they shouted, and they, they cut themselves from morning to evening, even to the morning as again. But nothing like that happened over there. Elijah prayed and the God of the universe, God of the Bible, the creator, the supernatural being, responded to his prayer. And Elijah won the contest over there. So, when people, when skeptics allude to the God of the Bible as being anthropomorphic or human-like God or something like that, it is true. The Bible says that God has hands, God has eyes. Sometimes the Bible talks about God in such a way. Fancy he's having a hand, he's having a heart, He's having an eye or something like that. But it doesn't really make God um, a human creation. No. The God of the Bible cannot be created by man. Which is why I always tell you to consult our traditions. Consult our palaces. Go to the kings surrounding around us. Consult uh, what ca our customs and all that. Ask the various religions around our, our universe. Ask them um, about their primitive worshiping, worshiping ways and all that. They will tell you they were having smaller gods and they were having them stored up in their rooms, in their kitchens and all that. But the supreme deity, the God of the universe, the creator of the entire universe was never anybody's personal God. God isn't anybody's personal God, but rather the creator of the entire world, the creator of you and I, the maker of the entire universe, the maker of of time and space, the uncaused cause of all creation. He is the one we are referencing over here. So when the Bible talks about God, when the Bible talks about God, it is talking about the creator, the one that is not created or the one that is not made by man's hand. Those idols people do bow down to are man-made what? Idols. And God of the Bible speaks against all this. Man can never create God. The created gods by man are like men and they are never superior they are never what uh savable like they cannot save or something like that but god of the bible gives a pattern that is why he's not a runaway landlord he knows what a man is he knows what to do so as to save man he knows what to do so as to bring man to salvation but those that has been created by men carried by men and they move along with them they go by length with them and all that these these aren't the God we are worshiping as Christians. We are worshiping the supreme deity. He's not a runaway landlord, the one that made time and space. May God richly bless you. If you are a skeptic watching this, I would love for you to take your take your time to listen carefully. I'm just drawing distinctions between the gods made by men and the God that made you and I. Christians do worship the God that made you and I, but not the one that is or that was made by man's hand. May God bless you. 
make sure to share this to your loved ones. Tell them to also take part in what actually we're doing over here, and it's going to help uh, erase several many false ideologies about the concept of God in accordance with the Bible. Bye-bye. Limited. Uh -huh. You're used to modern cost effective building technologies to build state of the art facilities. Sina Yesen so provides separate ancillary services such as architectural drawings, landscaping, renovation, electrical installations, and in repairs. Yeah, your house management, plumbing, carpentry, masonry works, and a more kakam. Maybe you have for what queen to do one of Peter was done. I hear on a kadanda. Makam for Waha Construction Company Limited. It's a month. Then be a repeat DCBR. So you school done chapel done restaurant. From a Waha Construction Company Limited, not to Mada, who was in the Kamadamo, Sepeda Washer Dumawa, or Bosha Damo, Captain Mabra, Ababa, Abaja Wooden. So, what queen to my Nessa PDs wouldn't was Central Region, Ashanti Region, Western Region, Greater Accra, Ghana, Babyara, Boyara, and you double contact to one. Kulu Biani, Waha Construction Company Limited, Woko Yarati, what then be a repeat DC Biara on your problem. Now, yeah, your repairs is so many able staffs in Woho 24 7. Time being here, one of Biara, a front one I bet you Waha Construction Company Limited, Woko Coast. Kakum do Abra Jukwa Road in Udu Waben Kakum M.A. Basic School Abrosa no bien na Wawa first floor Ebu tuma from wun 055-026-8598 Email Waha Construction Limited at gmail.com Social media handles Instagram, Twitter And na LinkedIn On Waha Construction Limited And na Waha Ghana On Facebook Ebu tuma visit to one website www.wahaconstruction.com Waha Construction No job too big No job too small. Keep watching. Move on to Los TV. Keep watching. Don't change it. Keep watching. Don't change it. Keep watching. Don't change it. And one day Los Angeles.